Did you ever wake up one day and realize that you don't know much about the chords that you are playing? I mean, you know the chord shape, you know how to put it together in a chord progression, but then you kind of wonder which chord I'm actually playing, which notes I'm actually playing, and where these notes come from. So it happened to me when I started, I would just learn a lot of chord shapes, but I didn't really know where they come from. And so my teacher taught me this lesson that I'm just about to show you that changed the way I learn the chords today. So in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to add two more elements to the chord shape. So obviously the chord shape is the element number one. You gotta learn how to play the chord, but then you also have to know which notes you are playing, which is the second thing, and third thing is the color that each chord have. Now I'm gonna show you all the chord types that you can play on the guitar and how to make them so that you can come up with new chords and new chord progressions. Now we can break down these chords in four big categories. The category number one, the chords without extensions. So we're gonna be playing the power chords, the major chord, the minor chord, the sus2 chord, and the sus4 chord. The group two is the chords with one extension. The major and the minor seven chord, the dominant seven chord, the add nine chord, the minor add nine, the add 11, the minor add 11, and the sixth chord. The group three, the chords with two or more extensions, the major nine, the minor nine, the dominant nine, major, minor, and dominant 11th, and major, minor, and dominant 13th. Group four, alternate chords. Chords that have one or more altered notes, the augmented chords, diminished chords, the sharp nine, flat nine, flat 13. 90% of these chords come from the major scale, and so we're always going to refer to the major scale, and especially the degree of the major scale. When I say that a chord is a one, three, five, I am referring to the three notes of the chord that comes from the major scale the first, the third, and the fifth degree of the scale. It's a very long list, so grab your guitar and let's get started. You can get the diagrams on my Patreon page. Thank you so much for all the support you give me on my Patreon page, guys. Let's get started. Now, group one, chord number one, the power chord. This is technically not really a chord as it doesn't have the third. We only play two notes, the one and the five. It's a very simple chord, the shape is super simple, and you can move it up and down. The index finger is the root note, the one, and so if I play here, I'm playing an E power chord. A G power chord, and an A power chord, and back to the E. The next chord, the one, three, five. The most basic chord that we have in music, it is also called a triad. We have one, three, and five. Now, it's worth to mention that this three is a major third, so every time you see the number three, it means that the third is major. So it's one, major third, and perfect fifth. We can also play like this. This is a G major, one, three, five. Root note, third, and fifth. Now, if we lower the third to a flat third, we are going to go from a major chord to a minor chord. So the one flat three and five is a minor chord, also called a minor triad. This is a C minor chord. Now the next chord is the sus two and the sus four, which are the suspended chords. Now the sus two is the one, two and five. So if we start with the basic chord, the one, three, five, and we lower the third down to the second, we are playing a sus two chord. In this case, a C sus two. One, two, five. We can do the same thing uh, over a different chord. For example, a D major chord. The third is the F sharp here on the fret number two. We lower this down to the E and we have a, a D sus2. In this case, I'm playing three, sorry, five, one, and two. So it's a D sus2 with an inversion. C 
same thing with the sus4. We are playing one, four, and five. So we are bringing up the third of the chord up to the fourth, and we are playing a C sus4. You can do that on the D major, so you will have. So I have five, one, and four. You could play D major, D sus2, D sus4, and back to the D major. Now we're gonna move on to the group number two, chords that have at least one extension. Now the extension is any note that we play above the fifth. It could be the seventh, the ninth, the eleventh, and the thirteenth. Now we're gonna start with the major seven chord, which is the one, three, five, seven. It's a chord played with four notes, one, three, five, seven. The third is major, the seventh is major. Now the most common shape is this one, where we play one, five, seven, and three. That's another common shape with one, seven, three, and five. Beautiful sounding chords. Now, if you start from the major seven chord and you lower the third and you lower the seventh, then you're gonna be playing a minor seven chord. So the minor seven chord is one, flat three, five, flat seven. The most common shape is this one, where you actually play one, one, five, minor seven, and minor third, or flat seven, flat third, it means the same thing. So. They sound beautiful, really kind of folk-ish. Now the next chord is the dominant 7 chord, which is really interesting. The most bluesy chord that we have in music. And it is played like this, you have 1, 3, 5, and flat 7. So in this chord you have the major 3rd and the flat 7. Now we usually play this chord like this, that's the most basic shape that we usually practice when we start playing guitar, where we play the one, five, flat seven, and three. You can also play like this. With this one, you repeat the one twice. So you have one, three, flat seven, and one again. Now let's talk about the add nine and the minor add nine. These are chords that have the basic one, three, five plus the ninth. So for example, in the case of a C major, you will have one, three, and five, just like the basic triad, plus the ninth, which is the note D. So it's one, three, one, three, five, nine. This is a pretty common shape on the guitar. One, three, five, nine. Uh, you could also do it uh, for a G chord, look at this. A beautiful sounding chord, we are playing one, five, nine, and three. So for the add nine chord, we don't necessarily have to have a major add nine. When you see add nine, it's a major chord with the ninth. Now if we take an add nine chord and we lower the third, we will have a minor add nine chord. In the case of a C, add nine, we're gonna lower the third and play one, flat three, five, and nine. Beautiful sounding chord. One of the most common minor add nine chord is the A minor add nine chord. Beautiful sounding chord. You're playing one, five, nine, flat, three, and you can also add another five on the top E string. 
Another common chord is the E minor at 9 with 1, 5, 9, flat 3 and you also have another 5 and another 1. A lot of notes in this chord. Now the next chord is the add 11 and the minor add 11. Just like the add 9 and the minor add 9, it's the same thing, just we're gonna add the 11th. So, it's the basic triad with 1, 3, 5 plus the 11th. Now, this chord doesn't really sound that good, okay? And so for this particular chord, the 1, 3, 5, 11, we have to find a better chord shape to emphasize this beautiful 11th. For example, if I play an A add 11 like this, I am playing 1, 3, 11, 5. Now lower the third and you're gonna have a beautiful minor add 11 chord. So it's 1, flat 3, 5, and 11. Again, this one doesn't really work that much, but the formula is this one. 1, flat 3, 5, and 11. Now, take the example, the A add, nine, add, add 11 we were playing before. So, you want to lower the third, which is this one, put it down to a C natural. And you have an A minor add 11 chord, beautiful sounding chord. I'm playing 1, flat 3, 11, and 5. I can also play one on top here, so I have one, flat three, eleven, and one. Go rid of the fifth. Same thing for the D minor. That was the major. That's the minor. Now we also have the major six and the minor six. These are chords that we don't really use. I don't really... Now we also have the major six and the minor six, which are chords that I don't really use that much. The formula is very simple though, it's 1, 3, 5, and 6 for the major 6. And for example, some of these chords uh, you can play like this. Um, so it's 1, 3, 6, and 1. And you can also like lower the third and play 1, flat 3, 6, and one again to play the minor six. But I'm not really a huge fan of these chords and I don't really have a lot of examples on this one. Now the next group of chords is the one that have two or more extensions. Now, we're talking about chords with five notes. The first group is the major nine, which is played with one, three, five, seven, and nine. So every time you see a chord with the major 9, you want to play both the major 7 and the major 9. Now this chord has 5 notes, we're dealing with 6 strings, we have to get rid of 1 note. In this shape, we're actually only playing 1, 3, 7, 9, so we're getting rid of the 5th. Beautiful sounding chord. Now lower the third and lower the seventh and then you come up with the minor nine which is one flat three flat seven nine. The nine is always major. Beautiful sounding chord. Um, we are playing one flat three flat seven and the nine. Again we're not playing the fifth the fifth here, which will be G, but we kind of getting rid of it. Beautiful sounding chord. The root note is on the middle finger, so this is an E minor 9. Now the next chord is the dominant 9, uh, which is labeled as just a number 9 next to the chord, so like a C9, a D9. This chord is played like this, 1, 3, 5, flat 7, and 9. So it's a major chord with a major 9, but with a flat 7. 
beautiful bluesy chord. And sometimes you can play like this as well. If you want to play the fifth on the E string as well. Now the 11th chord, the major 11, minor 11 and the dominant 11 are massive chords with a lot of notes. Now, I don't usually use these chords a lot, but we want to learn the formula. So the major 11th is played with 1, 3, 5, so the basic chord, plus 3 extensions, the 7, the 9, and the 11th. So usually you could play like this, and only play 1, 7, 9, and 11. It's kind of a tricky chord to apply, especially if you like, you know, pop music, indie music. It's kind of a more of a jazzy chord. Now, the minor 11 is going to be played with a flat 3 and a flat 7. So the formula is 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, 9, and 11. We usually play this chord like this. So we have to get rid of some of the notes. In this case, we are playing one, flat seven, flat three, and 11th. So we are getting rid of the ninth. Beautiful jazzy chord. Now from the minor uh, 11, the dominant 11 is very simple. Uh, just play one, three, five, flat seven, nine and eleven and we usually play the chord like this so it's just like the minor eleven just with the B string on the fret number three and this is a C eleven so it's one flat seven nine and eleven so we don't play the major third and we don't play the fifth now the next family is the thirteenth family major 13, minor 13, and dominant 13. Uh, we have a lot of notes here. The formula is one, three, five. We're talking about the major 13. So we have a major chord, one, three, five, and then all the extensions from the seven to the 13. So seven, nine, 11, and 13. Now we have to omit some of the notes. We can't play all of them. We're just dealing with six strings. So usually we play like this. So it's one, seven, three, and 13. We get rid of the 11th and we get rid of the ninth. You can also play here. For the minor 13, you wanna lower the third and lower the seventh. So we're gonna have one, flat three, and five, flat seven, nine, 11, and 13. So if we start with the major 13, we want to lower the 7, one fret down, and low, lower the third. So we're going to play 1, flat 7, flat 3rd, flat 3, sorry, and the 13. The dominant 13 is one of the most stretchy chords I've ever played. This one. Now it's a dominant chord, so we'll have the major third and the flat seven. So it's one, three, five, flat seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. We usually play like this. So it's one, three, seven, nine, thirteen. We're playing two extensions here. The the, the nine, sorry, the seven, the nine, and the thirteen. So it's three extensions. Now the last group is the altered chords, which are chords that have at least one note altered. We're talking about the augmented chords, the diminished chords, and the flat nine, sharp nine, and flat 13. The first chord is the augmented chord, which is basically a chord played with three notes, the one, three, sharp, five. So we have to alter the fifth. In if we play a C major chord with one, three, five, we just want to sharpen the fifth and play the G sharp. Now this chord has a pretty, you know, distinct sound. 
and you can transpose this chord um, a major third up to play the exact same notes. Now the diminished chord is played with a diminished fifth, so it's another altered note. Um, the formula is this one, one, flat three, and flat five. Um, we can see the example in G major, where we have the one, three, five. Now we play the one, flat three, and five, which is the minor chord, and then you can, from the minor chord, play the diminished chord by playing the one, flat three, and flat five. It's a very tense chord. And this chord can be moved uh, up a minor third, and you will play the same note with an inversion. Now, I usually use the diminished chord to emphasize a dominant chord. So, for example, if I'm in the key of uh, D minor, and I have D minor, G minor, and then I have the A, which is the dominant chord, A7, I can then kind of change the A7 into a diminished chord and add more tension that resolves to the D minor. So. Now we also have the half diminished chord, which is just like a diminished chord, so with one, flat three, and flat five, but with also the flat seven. Now this is a G uh, diminished chord. If we add the F to this chord, so the minor seventh, the flat seven, is going to become a half diminished chord. Usually we play like this. There are two, there are actually three shapes that I use a lot. This one, which is one, flat seven, flat three, and flat five. Or if you wanna keep the same G half diminished, we're gonna play here with the root note here. And this time we have one, flat five, flat seven, flat three. Or you have it here with the G. So you have one, flat five, flat seven, flat three. Sometimes you can play like this with one, two, three, and four. Or like this. The next chord is the sharp nine, which is a dominant chord with the altered ninth. And it also, it's also called the Hendrix chord uh, because he used to use it a lot, especially the E uh, sharp nine. Now the formula for this chord is this one. You have one, three, five, and flat seven, just like a dominant seven chord. But then when you add the nine, you wanna, you don't wanna play the major nine. You wanna play the sharp nine. Now this is kind of a tricky chord to uh, use, especially if you use if you play pop music or indie music. Uh, it's much more of a jazzy chord and resolves beautifully, uh, you know, to a minor chord. So if I'm playing, for example, um, a chord progression in G minor, I will play G minor. And the D, which is the dominant chord, I can play a, a D, sh uh, D dominant seven sharp nine, or just a D sharp nine. Now, just like the sharp nine, the flat nine uses the same formula. So you have one, three, five, flat seven, just like a dominant chord, but now the ninth, uh, rather than be sharp, is going to be flat. So this is sharp nine, major nine, flat nine. It's kind of a tricky chord to play because this is like a C flat nine, and I'm playing three, two, three, and two. So I'm using a bar chord here. 
and again is a dominant chord so it resolves beautifully uh, over like a minor chord progression same G minor A and D chord and A and the D flat 9 back to the G Now last chord, D flat 13, which again, I don't really use a lot, really jazzy chord. Um, pretty cool formula, it's just like a 13 chord, but with the flat 13. So if you learn how to play a flat 13 chord, which is this one, for example, a G 13, you will have one, flat seven, three, and 13, you can lower the 13 down to a flat 13 and play the G flat 13. And again, this is a dominant chord, so it resolves beautifully over either a major or a minor chord progression. I'm gonna play a 3, 2, 1 major. So it's a D minor 7, G flat 13, and C major 7. Now I hope we covered all the chords, uh, not a short list. You want to really take it step by step, you don't have to use all these chords, in fact I only use probably 20% of this massive list. But I really wanted to give you the formula of all these chords, which is obviously super helpful. Now you really want to take it step by step, learn one formula at a time and just come up with different chord shapes. And remember that you can get the tabs for all these chords that I was playing, so check my Patreon page. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you next time.